Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to go ahead on and get started. My name is Courtney Scott, and I am the Assistant Chief Administrative Officer in the Office of Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom. I oversee our Office of Community Development. And I want to thank you all for joining our technical assistance session for the Baton Rouge Developer Program in partnership with Louisiana Housing Corporation. Uh, we are issuing this, these funds to interested parties for renovation, construction, or reconstruction of blighted properties in East Baton Rouge Parish. We have approximately $1.6 million in federal community development block grant declared disaster recovery funding that will be available to support this initiative. Uh, Mayor President Broom has a vision of peace, prosperity, and progress in our community. And one major key to achieving that vision is to have equitable community development, which you all play a part in. Before we begin today, I would like to take a moment to thank our partners at the Louisiana State Office of Community Development, as well as Louisiana Housing Corporation and HGA for their continued support and partnership in this work. Your dedication and collaboration is a critical component of the work that we're doing right here in East Baton Rouge Parish to ensure that all of our residents have an opportunity to obtain safe, affordable, and energy efficient housing. Today's technical assistance session is designed to provide each of you with an opportunity to learn more about our developer program. Please be assured that you're in very capable hands with the team that will be presenting to you today. And I'd like to take a moment to introduce that team. We have Connie Hall, Raymond Rodriguez, and TJ Beeman with the Louisiana Housing Corporation, and Candace Mahoney and Marjorie Torres with HGA uh, that has put this uh, technical assistance session today. So we thank you all for your support. They will be giving an overview presentation of the program, and then we'll take questions at the end. If you do have questions, please place them in the chat. We will have someone answering those. And you can also raise your hand through the chat functions that is at the bottom of the screen or in the app if you are via mobile phone. We will unmute you and call on you when it is your time to ask your question. I want to thank each of you for your commitment to building a safe, hopeful, and healthy community for East Baton Rouge Parish. And we look forward to the work that we will bring forth. Thank you all so much. I'm going to invite the HGA team to start with the program overview and eligibility. Is Candace on mute? She may be Candace. Uh, if you're talking, you are on mute. And thank you, Courtney, for the introduction. Thank you very much. No problem. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Figure it out. Yes, that's the classic, that is the classic phrase for 2020 and 2021. Yeah, uh, mute. Yep, I don't think we'll have a call or a meeting without it. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's it. Um, Let's move through here, if I can. Program overview, we're going to have 1,649,804,000 available to this program for eligible affordable rental projects. And as Courtney mentioned, this includes constructing new housing units or renovating or reconstructing vacant residential rental housing units. The funding comes from HUD, it is Community Development Block Grant Declared Disaster Recovery Front funding that was awarded to the city parish from the 16 floods. The application period is now open and be accepting applications now through March 11th by 4.30 p.m. Um, so the NOFA and the application was published Monday. Um, I'm sorry, the application will be published tomorrow. The NOFA was published Monday. Um, we're at the technical workshop today on the 3rd. Um, any questions or comments that you don't get answered today will need to be submitted sometime before February 15th. We will post public responses to those questions and comments by the 18th. 
and then the application deadline is March 11th. Um, and we anticipate hopefully having conditional award letters issued by April 1st, fun little April Fool's Day for everybody. Um, eligible applicants can be a private for profit property owner. Um, so, you know, an individual or, um, partnership it can be a CHODO community housing development organization. 501c3 or 501c4 not for profit with a board approved mission to further affordable housing or demonstrated through the MPO bylaws mission statement, a local public housing authority or a local development agency that is not a parish or municipality. Qualified projects are one that is not in excess of four residential rental housing units is located within the city limits of Baton Rouge and the parish limits of East Baton Rouge Parish, excluding the municipalities of Baker, Central, and Zachary. Each residential housing unit must be a qualified dwelling unit to be rent restricted and income restricted based on the income limits set by the program. All residential rental units included in the project must be vacant as of Monday. So, um, you know, you can't have kicked somebody out this week to be blunt about it. So they would have had to have been vacant as of Monday, the date that the NOFA was published. Eligible properties must be a residential rental structure site built or modular only composed comprised of 1 to 4 units. Um, you, your application cannot request assistance for more than 4 units. As we said, must be located in the city limits, Baton Rouge or the limits of uh, East Baton Rouge parish, excluding Baker central and Zachary. You may be located on 1 site or on multiple sites within the approved ge geographic boundaries. So you can submit an application for. A fourplex or four units on scattered sites. Um, you will have to undergo an LHC funded environmental review. So they will take care of that for you. But as I'm sure many of you know, those can be somewhat time consuming. Um, and any issues that they find are going to have to be remedied by the applicant. So the award matrix um, applicants, you may apply for funding to build, rehab, or reconstruct a maximum of four units. The maximum potential award amount is $500,000. You may only submit one application for assistance. And within that one application, it does have room for you to input the information for four units, like we said, but only one application. So the funding allowed by unit type is one unit up to $150,000, two units up to $250,000, three units up to $375,000, and four units up to $500,000. The scoring criteria, um, if you're in a low income area and um, will, I will have some, we'll have some, um, I know some of you may not know how to go out and find that detailed information. So we will make that information available to you guys um, on the website and show you how to look up whether or not a census uh, income tract, a low income census tract, whether or not it's low income. If it's slums and blight, um, the project must have been declared slums and blight by the planning office in uh, the city parish. Uh, there are resilient construction standards that you'll get points for for things like impact resistant windows, high wind application, roofing methods and materials, um, electrical outlets that are you know 24 inches above the floor, HVAC elevated uh, beyond base flood elevation, and waterproof floor covering. Um, and then you get points for leveraging funding. So to get those points, the percentage of your 2021 funding from the program must be 25% or less of the proposed total project cost. The application can be located and submitted online at the website listed there, louisianahousingcorporation.com. Links to that site will be posted on the City Parish Office Community Development. I believe the Bill Baton Rouge website and their Facebook page, and I believe um, LHC is going to have it on their site as well. Applications must be complete upon submission with supporting documentation. Um, you have to read through both the application guide and the NOFA because there are list of documents that have to be submitted. Some are certification forms provided for you to print and sign. Others are things like site plans, floor plans. Um, you know, flood zone information. So just make sure that you read through that in detail. And, you know, if you have any questions about the information in there that you can get that to us before the 15th of this month. And then, as I just mentioned, the supporting document, the certifications, the stuff that we provide you guys that you will fill out and submit are the duplication of benefits certification to check and see if you received any funding, 
um, from SBA or NFIP as a result of the 16 floods and outreach certification um, regarding your tenants, if you have rental properties, um, stop work certification and the vacancy certification. And we talked about the required application documents that you're going to have to submit to the program. Um, they will need to be submitted via email and we'll provide you guys that information will be on the website as well with the application. So things like the site plan, floor plan, evidence that it meets, zoning requirements, uh, scope of work, evidence that the housing unit is not in a flood hazard area. And there will be information in the application guide about how you can find that out, how to look up the flood zone using the LSU Ag Center maps. Documentation of the lender's contingent commitment to provide um, construction financing. Documentation of other available funds. They'll ask you, you know, for a sources and uses statement to see what kind of other funding you have coming in and how all that funding is going to be used. Uh, front side and rear elevations just for new construction, reconstruction only, not required for rehab. Interior photos for recon and rehab only, exterior photos. Um, if work has started, if you've already started some rehab, we'll need to see the construction contract. And then if you're doing rehab, the uh, compliance, the alignment of scope with the HUD CPD green building retrofit checklist, just to make sure that everything's energy efficient and meets those HUD minimum requirements. Um, we'll ask for certification regarding sources and uses of funds, statements, and you know, no duplication of funds, the stop work order provision document. Um, there is a signature page on the application and then make sure that you sign and date it. The vacancy certification for recon and rehab only, and then the tenant certification for recon and rehab only. And uh, I know that was quick, but that's about the gist of it. And I think LHC um, is here if you guys have any questions. And if you want to wait, look at all the documents, write down your questions and come back that way, you know, before the 15th, that's fine too. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, everyone. This is uh, uh, Ray Rodriguez with the Louisiana Housing Corporation, and uh, uh, tremendous thanks uh, uh, to Candace and, and uh, Marjorie and everybody at HGA, as well as the uh, the City of Baton Rouge, with working with us on uh, putting this together. Uh, some of you may or may not be familiar with this program already. Uh, we we ran this program uh, in a. a, a a couple of uh, we've done a couple rounds of this uh, previously. Uh, this program, uh, you know, is is a program that requires that the applicant themselves is able to secure construction financing. So, um, uh, you know, make sure that that you know, as was suggested, that you uh, do read the NOFA because uh, there are, there is lots of important information and details in there and better requirements uh, in order to submit a. Uh, successful uh, and acceptable application. You'll need to make sure that you provide uh, uh, everything that's required. So, um, uh, uh, please, you know, uh, uh, please look that over, and you'll you'll see that there's contact information. Uh, there's an email address that was that's listed here. The NLRP email. You can submit questions there. Uh, we do have a blackout period in which uh, we will not be able to to uh, speak to anyone individually pertaining to the applications, uh, uh, the program, sorry, the program uh, during the application period. Uh, and, and, and so during that blackout period, just in case you're wanting to call or speak to someone and you're, you're curious as to why we can't answer that, that, uh, that information will be there in the NOFA as well. So uh, we thank everyone for your participation and we're looking forward to uh, seeing some successful applications so that we can help produce more affordable housing across the, the city of Baton Rouge. And Ray, I think there's a gentleman named David that had a question that Helen can unmute um, if he wants to go ahead and ask it. Sure, that'd be can, great. Can Thanks. you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, David. Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ray and, and Candace and team for the presentation. This is really good, good news. Um, yes, two quick questions. Um, one is, as Candace uh, presented on uh, one to four units. So if you have units that are perhaps a part of a larger structure, can can that be considered for a carve out of maybe two or three renovation of those units? Uh, that would be my first question. And my second question is uh, in the scoring rubric, Candace, that you presented, um, I didn't see where like, for instance, in Baton Rouge, we have opportunity zone 
um, or, or different zones in Baton Rouge um, for the choice grant uh, in collaboration with the mayor's office. Um, would there be consideration for points allowed for, for structures or, or projects in that those specific zones? And those are my two questions. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Uh, th th those are good questions. And, and uh, the scoring criteria, you're right. I mean, there, there, there's the uh, uh, the choice neighborhoods and, and you, you know, there's a, there's a few other uh, uh, fields that we considered uh, uh, taking consideration for the scoring, but uh, obviously we can't encompass all of them. Uh, but we tried to incorporate as many as we could, but also not trying to restrict it to where it may prevent someone else that maybe a mom and pop type owner that, that would also like to, to receive assistance. So uh, we didn't want to make it, uh, uh, you know, targeted at one more than the other. So, uh, so I hope that helps at least address your question about the uh, the choice neighborhoods and, and, and scoring. Uh, it, in regards to the structure type, uh, so this program uh, is, is going to be still kind of held to the same standards as our. Uh, our previous rounds of the developer and, and, and uh, landlord program. So um, that would limit the structure size to no structure that's larger than a, a four unit structure. So, so, so uh, that would, you know, no five plex, six plex, et cetera. So no apartment complexes. It's going to, it would be restricted to uh, anything from a single family to a four plex. Is that, uh, is that David? He may be on mute. Ellen, Courtney, do we have anybody else raising their hands with any questions? Nope, it was just David raising his hand and he did say thanks, Ray, in the chat. So it looks like he was <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay, here's um, Anthony Kimball. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Thank you. Um, hey, how you guys, everyone doing today? Uh, my question, I saw on um, the app, it had something about a, uh, the structure not being more than 110% um, uh, as far as, I guess, in comparison to what the structure was originally was. Um, could you give more information on that rule and um, what exactly that means? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, that's a... Uh, uh, Good question, and, and thank you for asking. Uh, so, the the ten percent is uh, uh, that's based upon the the rehab standards for uh, our our uh, our programs that are are tailored to rehab and reconstruction of a of a, of a structure that was uh, impacted by disaster. So, when you have a, a property that's going to be rehabilitated or reconstructed. Uh, uh, the standard rule is that that uh, you cannot go beyond 10% of the original footprint of the property. So, uh, reason being is, uh, you know, as you as you're aware, CDBG uh, disaster recovery funds are, uh, uh, it, you know, come come through appropriations, and uh, the funds are are designed to really repair and and, and recover what was existing. Uh, so it's it, it's not the intent to spend funds to allow uh, uh, a property owner to to expand and to build on to uh, what was what was already existing. So that's the 110. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the the 10 percent rule. That's where that comes from. So if you're going to rehab and repair, um, uh, the the understanding is that you're going to rehab repair what was existing with uh, a 10 percent variance that that you have is wiggle room. Uh, but when you go beyond that, you're really uh, uh, bleeding more into the, the new development, new construction, uh, if that, if that helps. Okay. And does a follow up to that. Um, I'm sorry, did I cut someone off? I was just, this is Connie Hall from LHC. I was going to say that, um, usually we only find that it's sort of triggered around reconstruction projects. We have very few reconstruction projects, reconstruction. We usually only allow, you know, if it is, um, if it's appropriate in that, you know, 
the original structure is just so damaged, it's really just not cost effective to rehab it. It's probably better to just sort of build better and reconstruct it, make it more green and whatnot. Um, right. Times when an owner will reconstruct, they will want to, you know, rearrange some things and just make the layout a little better and smarter. And sometimes you can add on a little bit. So if you had a structure that was originally like a thousand square feet, you know, an extra 10% is only going to give you a hundred. So at the end of the day, that structure right. was like a 1,100 square feet. Right. That's, that's what that is. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and with these properties being rental units, what is the like complying the whole period uh, for this program? Uh, the, uh, the affordability is for uh, a five year period. So the, and, and I'm glad you, that you asked that question. So the, the way this program works is it's, it's, um, it's designed as a, a construction takeout. And what that means is since an applicant is required to secure the construction financing that's necessary for the, for the project, uh, that means at, at the front end, the applicant will get the financing, they'll get the construction uh, um, completed with their, their lender, uh, we'll come through, we'll do a final inspection, a HQS inspection. Uh, to make sure that the property meets housing quality standards and that it's a decent, safe, and sanitary home uh, before we give approval for a tenant to move in uh, that's income qualified. And uh, then the the property owner will, will receive a, a takeout loan to take out the construction loan. So uh, up based off of the program limitations, uh, you know, you could receive uh, anywhere up to um, just the uh, uh, the four, you know, four units. I mean, you, you really you could do the the hundred and fifty for uh, a single family, and, and uh, uh, you know, you could do four single families, which would be uh, uh, hundred and fifty thousand each. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I went back up because that's because the the limitation is the is is five hundred thousand. So uh, you could cap at the five hundred thousand. Uh, and we would, and, and at the end of the construction period, we would issue a takeout. It would pay off that loan, and then you would have a five-year affordability period, meaning that is you would be responsible for uh, uh, maintaining low-income uh, rents to low-income uh, tenants. Uh, we'll provide those those rent limits uh, annually, as they're updated by HUD. Uh, and you would, you know, the, the units would be restricted to those income limits and the, and the rent limits uh, for five years, and then the loan would be completely forgiven. Okay. And, yeah. um, cool, cool. Um, I don't want to take all the questions, but um, one more. Um, I heard you said, you know, if there's a property, let's say that might you you think maybe good for tearing it down, um, and it might not be able to be rehabbed. Um, what is, is there a process for submitting that property to you guys to see if it makes sense to be torn down before uh, application was submitted or how do you guys, what's usually the process uh, for those properties that may be in question um, as right. should I tear it down or, and do new construction or should I try to rehab this property? Hey, right, that's it. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, it's Connie again. I can answer that. Usually um, you would... So you have some um, required documents that are required for you to submit along with your application. Um, one of those items is a scope of work. So we would really just ask that you um, submit a scope of work, submit a rehab scope of work and submit a reconstruction scope of work. That way we can kind of, um, we can compare, you know. Um, also, we would look at just the value of the structure as well. That's a factor. Um, that they rehab, we're also looking at photos. Um, and again, any scope of work that is submitted um, by an applicant would have been prepared by a licensed contractor. So the contractor, we would ask for him to essentially just, you know, compile some sort of a small narrative justification appropriate, if, if that makes sense. So we're looking at costs, but we're also sort of relying on feedback from the contractor because of course they're there in the field actually looking at the structure and we're not, you know, they can sort of highlight certain um, 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 things about the property that would be construction. Okay. All the Thank you. That's a, that's an 
You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, to, to add to, to what Connie said, uh, you know, what we ran into is that in a lot of in a lot of cases, we had situations where an applicant wanted to uh, repair, uh, you know, repair the damaged property. And then when it came time to pull permits, uh, permitting office said that they would not uh, approve a permit because the value of the repairs exceeded uh, a certain percentage of the, the value of the home. So, it, so to, to kind of add to that, it, it's not even a bad idea to check with the permitting office and see if they're, uh, you know, you know, if if they have thoughts or or, or uh, insight as to what the max they would permit. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's better to run into that up front than it is on the back end. So. Uh, okay. Um, with that being said, once funds are rewarded, is there a timetable to complete the project to still be eligible for receiving a construction um, reimbursement or you know, take out at you know, the end of your project? Uh, good question. Well, it, it, so the way the reason the program is structured the way it is is actually to incentivize uh, uh, property owners and, and uh, applicants to you know, get construction done as quickly as possible because knowing that um, um, in most cases, if you will, if there's if they're required to get uh, construction financing, they're paying interest as long as they're doing construction on the property. So I think it's uh, uh, it helps to you know persuade them to wrap up as quickly as possible so that we can provide the takeout because uh, we're we're going to be capped at at our takeout amount. So um, you know there's cases where we've re we've done uh, new construction or reconstruction on the house. Uh, uh, you know, our cap is 150,000. Well, if things drag out or if there's change orders, uh, et cetera, that exceed that, uh, when it comes down to the time of the takeout, we're still only limited to what we're, ma you know, our max out. So, so we'll pay the 150 and, and, and so there could be some that's still, uh, um, left in a permanent loan. So, okay. uh, uh, yeah, so hopefully that helps uh, address that, that question. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I can keep. I mean, I definitely have a few more. I mean, I, if, <laughs> if anyone else has questions, definitely. Uh, I like to have full understanding of things. Sure. No, I'd, I'd rather answer the questions now. Uh, uh, you know that way we're all uh, we're all clear. That's that's the you know the the point of these uh, presentations on the front end. So let's. You know, we also have space. a full hour as well. So I do want to invite people to know that we do have the time. So please ask away. Okay, uh, so let's say, you know, we complete, you know, we're water funds, you're, you're, you know, we complete a project, um, just so I can understand holding time and like inspection times, we complete this project, we reach out to your office for the inspection. What is like the timing of that inspection to what type of approval process then needs to happen for that takeout to, to actually happen? Is that a 30 day process? Is that a 90 day process? Right. I, I, very good question. And, and, um, and it's. There's a process for sure. So, so to, to kind of uh, not not get too much into the weeds, uh, uh, it's, it's a very good point that you made because there's various inspections. Um, what we do is we recommend that our applicants uh, stay in touch in communication with uh, with us with our, uh, our with HGA will be assisting as well. But uh, anyway, you stay in touch with us, and and what we ask is that. Before you're ready for final inspection, you know that you you uh, you bring it to our attention. You know, uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll be ready for our HQS and our final inspections, uh, so that we could go ahead and coordinate that with our with our compliance department, uh, get those scheduled, and uh, we can provide the checklist of the documentation that we'll be needing uh, in order to process the the draw request uh, for the takeout. Once we get that final inspection, HQS inspection. So realistically, as long as we work together uh, in partnership, we should be able to have most, if not all, of the documentation uh, already prepared and ready to go. So that once we get those, those final inspections, we can submit the draw. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the the other added component to that is because because we're stewards on behalf of the Office of Community Development, on, on behalf of the, the, the city of Baton Rouge, 
Um, yeah, there, there are layers uh, in which the draw request has to be processed, reviewed, and approved. So, uh, so you know, LHC, we will prepare the draw request. It has to go then through, uh, you know, OCD as well as uh, uh, the city and uh, office of, of uh, uh, the to OFSS and the Treasury Office uh, for payment. So, so. On the back end, uh, uh, it can take some time just because of the the, the multi agency multi uh, uh, agencies that are involved. But um, but we can do things on the front end to really try to stay ahead of that as much as possible. And with these checklists you're you're discussing, these are things that are going to be provided to the 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 grant awardee or the, or the, the person that was awarded the funds um, when they are awarded. You know, first awarded the money in April. Uh, so yeah, yeah, the checklist is uh, is, is what we'll, what we will need um, to submit to the Office of Community Development uh, for them to confirm eligible costs and reimbursement. And and that's actually a good point for me to. There's another question that was raised here, uh, and and I think it's it's a it's a perfect opportunity to expand on that. So. Uh, for new construction projects, um, there's a question about architectural design fees um, and so. The costs that are eligible under this program, the costs are for both hard and soft costs. So there are eligible hard costs and soft costs that can be considered uh, up to the program limitations. So, um, so, so, you know, there can even be closing costs. Uh, there can be um, uh, uh, recording costs. They can. So, so we have some additional items that could be covered. So let's just say the repairs are going to cost a hundred thousand, but you have. Uh, an additional 50,000 and other eligible costs, you know, we can still cover that uh, up to the limit program limitations. So, um, uh, you know, we'll work with our applicants. The 1 thing that we cannot pay is is developer fees or consultant fees. Uh, and then, you know, we also get into a lot of applicants that, that want to do contract uh, for themselves. They have their own construction. Uh, uh, Company and they they want to do their own repairs and and there's there's a, a separate process for that as well. So you know we have to get obtain uh, additional bids uh, and, and then compare them for reasonableness and and then for uh, construction for self we can't we also are not able to pay profit overhead um, um, you know for those those types of uh, instances. So. Um, I, I'm kind of expanding on a lot there, but but you should be able to uh, uh, you you'll be able to receive get more detail when you proceed when you read the NOFA. Uh, hey, and this is Connie. I want to quickly jump in and piggyback off of um, when you had questions about the checklist. So essentially, when all the work is complete, there is this there's a sort of large package that we compile that you will never see, but we compile it, you know, right. uh, and that's what we submit to get that process going to pay the lender back. So most of the documents, most of the items in that package that we put together, we already have. Um, some of, I'd say about maybe like a third of that package will be items that we need from you, from the owner. And that would be things like inspection reports that were um, prepared during your construction. It would be all of your invoices, basically everything for, and I, I I oftentimes do it, but basically it's just everything that I would need in order to um, confirm all the costs were paid, that all the costs were eligible, and that they sort of, you know, comply and jive with your loan amount, your construction award, you know, all those costs that we agreed on ahead of time, basically. Um, so it's really imperative if you, you know, if you are fortunate to, to in order to get an award, just starting from the beginning, it's really important to um, keep really good records. That way, when you are finished with construction, you'll really have everything you need to submit and you won't be, you know, scrambling or trying to get duplicates of this and that. Um, I also wanted to quickly throw in a random FYI too. Um, one of, because you have to secure construction financing, for this project and one of the required items for the application is um, to enclose a letter from a lender showing that you have a conditional commitment that you can get construction financing. It is not, we're not asking you to close at all with the lender. Please don't do that. It's really just a letter showing us that you have a commitment from a lender saying, hey, we are willing 
to extend construction financing if this person is accepted into your program. That's all that letter from the lender really communicates to us. We're not asking anyone on anything before, you know, before they submit to the program. Thanks, Connie. And, uh, and, and, and uh, good, right. These are great questions and good points. Uh, Monique, I see she's at, she had asked for uh, a link to the NOFA. So Monique, I, I sent a link to the BR, uh, the, the, the Baton Rouge site right now. I'm, we're working on getting the NOFA also published on the, uh, um, LHC site or, or a link at least to the Baton Rouge site. Um, uh, and then as far as the blackout period, um, uh, Candace, is there any way we can back up maybe the slides and go back to the, the timeline so we can share that with everyone? Yes. Thank you. So, um, I think we might have right, right, right. Right there, yeah. So, um, you see today being the third, today's the, 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 the workshop, um, uh, and then the. I can see where you're asking, yeah, the blackout period, because the blackout period is it, it it's not it's not listed clearly here, but the blackout period actually starts tomorrow through the 15th. And and that's so the questions all need to be submitted. Um uh, uh and they can be submitted by uh, uh the email that was provided the email is provided at the end of this this uh, uh presentation. The NLRP uh, email address, um, so questions can be submitted, and then and then we will po post the FAQs. Uh, we'll post the FAQs on the on the Baton Rouge uh, website on the 18th. And Ray, it's Courtney. I wanted to let you know too. Um, in our application, it does list the blackout period from tomorrow, as you reference, all the right. way to the end of the application period, which is March oh. 11th. Sorry, that's no problem. I'm sorry. That is correct. Um, so, so during that, so so that's why it, it, it's and and forgive me for misstating. That's correct. So the blackout period uh, uh, gives the program folks the, the time and opportunity to uh, be able to work the applications as they're being uh, uh, submitted and received. So uh, um, you do have the period, however, to, you know, to ask questions by submitting uh, formal questions for the FAQs, which will be posted on the 18th, but you have between now and the 15th to get those questions in. If that helps. Okay, um, do we have any other questions or comments at this time? Yes, we do have Laura Sherman that raised her hand to uh, ask a question. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you now, Laura. I'm sorry, um, I got in late on the um, the conference because someone had just texted me the, uh, the invite. But my question is, um, the properties, are they um, strictly um, for the 2016 flood? I'm sorry. You're asking me if they are as long as they are in the geographic area and they are in need of repair, uh, uh, then they're eligible for the program. And, and, and going back up and say also, you know, proper skin uh, So, you know, there's some additional criteria that it, it did not have to be flooded by the 2016 floods and the reason being is because we are still impacting the area uh so so the area uh by by increasing the affordable uh affordable rental housing uh, across the impact you know a flood impacted area so that's um that's why we're able to expand you know beyond the properties that were also impacted Laura, I would also say that we are recording this presentation and we'll be posting it. Um, sure. I'll go ahead and send you that link once we have it available so you can review the presentation from before you log in. Sure. Thank you.
Are there any other questions? I see some familiar names out there, so that's 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 a that's a good sign, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> well, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, I do want to take the time to thank everyone for joining us today. As a reminder of a few key things, if you have any questions after today, you will be able to submit them, and it must be by written inquiry via email at n l r p at l h c dot l a dot gov. Again, that is N is in Nancy, L is in Larry, R is in Rabbit, P is in Paul at lhc.la.gov. And that's no later than 4.30 on February 15th. And also inquiry shall clearly reference the name of the program, which is Baton Rouge Developer Program, and the section of the application that you're inquiring about or seeking clarification. The blackout period will be in effect uh, during the time of the active application intake period, which is February 4th. Tomorrow, through the close of the application, which is March 11th, 2021, any violation of this policy will be considered as a basis for disqualification uh, of consideration. I will put all this information in the chat. And then lastly, uh, the intake deadline for the application is March 11th at 4.30 p.m. The recording of this will be available at brla.gov forward slash office of community development, brla.gov forward slash office of community development. And again, on behalf of the Office of Community Development and the Office of Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom, I do wanna thank our LHC team, state OCD and HGA for your support in getting this program off the ground today. And thank you uh, all of our participants for joining and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks everyone. Yes, thank you. <laughs>